Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Ville Chillin' Podcast, part of the Villain ENT Network. My name is Jack. My name is Aaron. And just a reminder, we are on all major podcast services now, from Spotify to Apple, Google to Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. Give us the follow there and or a rating as it all helps us tremendously. Don't forget to also subscribe to our other Villain ENT channels. We have Ville Grillin'. Um, we're still working on updating content there, but it's all about just cooking and grilling and hanging out, which is what we tend to do. And then also the Ville Gaming channel where I've been trying to do some streaming and, um, I know Jack's working on trying to stream some there. So we'll, we're working on the Tetris, y'all. We're getting there. Uh, so yeah, just remember to check us all out there and then in the description of all of our videos and also the live streams on the Ville Gaming channel, we've launched a Discord, so make sure to join um, if you're looking for anybody to game with or whatever. And all of our content get automatically gets pinged there. So if you don't want like a YouTube notification or something, you can just happen to see it on Discord. So nice. Is there so what's the plan this week? What are we talking about? So this week, as a reminder, we are on our themed episode for September. Sorry, it's a little bit late. We try to post on Sunday nights. I was a little sick over the weekend, but uh, here we are. This month, we're talking about Louisville foods. So Louisville-based foods and then also Louisville-based restaurants. And then, as a reminder, next week, our th- or not next week, sorry, next month, our theme is Halloween and spooky. And, you know, K- Kentucky and Louisville especially has some of those sites around. So, like the keep, keep Louisville weird zombie walk type kind of things. Oh, yeah. Well, on top of Waverly. Waverly art. Oh. Can't say too much. But, yeah. Save that. <laughs> so, that's what we got coming up in October, of course. Um, so I guess before we get started, you do much this weekend. It was Labor Day. I didn't do a thing. Same. I just took it easy, you know, just ate some steaks. Yeah, we didn't even record. So I was like, like I said, I was a little sick under the weather. So I was just <laughs> taking it easy. definitely. Yeah, for Celebrating sure. Celebrating it the Labor Day the right way. Just <laughs> exactly. Not laboring. That's right. what they say. Um, <laughs> but uh, just a reminder, some upcoming event, events in Louisville. So there's actually a lot, and I'm going to start off with our favorite, as we've been saying, Pizza Week. It's not soon, it's in November, but it's one we will definitely participate in and probably, I mean, we could probably make a little mini-series about it. Just go to the different restaurants and try the different pizzas. I love pizza, so. I just ate some pizza before we got here, so. Um, yeah, p- pizza, 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 pizza. Oh, it's ready for some pizza. Um, another thing coming up, and I'm sorry I don't have links pulled up because we have a lot to talk about, and it would have taken me a long time to try to juggle those. Um, but you can definitely Google these, or in the Discord, I have posted all of the dates. So, just another reason to join the Discord. Um, coming up is the Big Four Arts Festival. Join it. Do it. Just do it. Uh, the Gaslight Festival. Kentucky Bourbon Festival. Bourbon and beyond. There's a theme here. Uh, Louder than life. Hopefully it happens this year. Didn't it get canceled? Was it last year or the year before? I think last year they they pulled it off. Gotcha. Still a muddy mess, but like the the year before, I think is when COVID. (sighs) People were mad. Every year, the thing is though, like the Karens complain. So this year, this year, let's just let's just enjoy it. Just have fun, people. Let it's it's a weekend, like. It's it's a weekend of fun. Like, come on. Uh, the Middletown Family Fun Festival, uh, Nulu Fest, and the St. James Art Show are all coming up. So, again, that's a lot, but the dates and a little bit of extra information is posted in the Discord under the local events channel. Check it out. So, moving on. On, we're going to talk about some classic Louisville foods. So the first one, I think, is the one that most people think of when they think of Louisville-founded foods, and that's the Hot Brown, right? The Brown Hotel, they started it. 
Like it's it's the most popular like open face type sandwich there is. People have done variations on variations of open face sandwiches, but the hot brown just kind of holds it. it. It was kind of perfected there, and that was what was that like in the early 1900s? I think I think it was like it was like yeah the 1930s or something 40s. It was that's when it caught on, I believe, and that was when the the Brown Hotel was. Yep. Really the only hotel around. So like the, the cooks there they they got creative, right? Like where did it come from exactly? Like where did that is there a back I mean there that's a good question. Um I mean there's a little bit here on the Brown Hotel's website. I'm not just gonna read it off entirely, but you are it was in the nineteen twenties. Uh the Brown Hotel drew over twelve hundred guests each evening for its dinner dance. By the wee hours of the morning, guests would grow weary of dancing and make their way to the restaurant for a bite to eat. Sensing their desire for something more glamorous than traditional ham and eggs, Chef Fred Schmidt set out to create something new to tempt his guests' palate. His unique dish, an open-faced turkey sandwich with bacon and a delicate Mornay sauce. The hot brown was born. So Nice. Yeah. I mean, it's... It, yeah, it's world famous. I mean, they even put the ingredients on here. Like, it's so famous. They just tell people how they make it. And it's not like people KFC, still go like, hot. It's not a secret, you know. They, yeah. They, <laughs> they let... It's not all this secret blend of herbs <laughs> and spices. Uh, but, yeah, they let in it. They, they let people know. But yet it, it doesn't stop people from going to the Brown Hotel just to eat, you know. Um, So we're definitely known for that. That's a big one. And there's multiple places. You don't have to go there to get that. You can no. Get that's the hot just brown where it started. Anywhere in town, or multiple places in town. Yeah, like that's... they might not call it a hot brown, but if they have an open face sandwich that either features like roast beef or turkey, you're basically getting a hot brown. <laughs> it's just not as authentic. It's yeah, not... it's not the Brown Hotel, but I mean that's like. I mean, that's like saying you're not getting authentic pizza from some places. You know, it's everybody's gonna put their own twist it's on here, stuff. It's... So. Either way, it's brought culinary experts from all over the world to Louisville, which definitely helps us. So, The mint julep. The mint julep. I don't think either of us are the biggest fans of the mint julep. I don't even know what all's in it, but I know I don't even really care for mint. So, but you cannot talk famous Kentucky drinks and foods without talking about the derby. And the mint julep. So it has powdered sugar, bourbon, water, and mint leaves. I think all of that explains why I don't like it except for the bourbon. It's sugar water with some mint leaves and bourbon. It's like somebody from Kentucky was brushing their teeth. <laughs> and they were like... Say, wait, I can't sell this to Colgate, but... uh. <laughs> Where's the, the derby is gonna run, <laughs> man. It, either way, it's it's still very well known, and I mean, who knows? Maybe if you use the high high class Woodford Reserve bourbon, it tastes better. I don't know. Is I it, like, I'm not a fan of mint. I don't like mint ice cream. I don't like mint chocolate. So I like peppermint, just as peppermint. You know. Right. When I think mint, I think brushing my teeth, but you can put it in a drink for the mint julep. Hey, whatever draws people here, and I mean, I'm sure you can go other places and order it, but like the Derby is just what it's known for, right? And so along that line is the Derby pie. So I'm, <laughs> once again, not the biggest fan because it's covered in walnuts or pecans and I'm not a fan of walnuts or pecans I don't know why I love peanuts I love cashews like macadamia nuts are good but I don't even really like pistachio so I don't know but it's huge I know a lot of people love it um, of course another staple around derby time you can find them everywhere everybody has their own twist on at every restaurant every every derby party you go to somebody makes their variation of derby pie right so right what's your what's your favorite uh kind of derby pie i don't 
Well, I, was, I don't really eat Derby pie. I don't really eat those kinds of pie anyways, like chocolate pies and stuff. I like fruit pies. That's about it. Like an apple pie. I'm a, I'm basic, dude. <laughs> when it comes to pie, I'm basic. Just give me that apple. It almost reminds me of a, uh, the German, almost like a German pie, I think is what it was. Gotcha. Yeah. I could see that. Really good, though. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not everybody's thing, like the texture and stuff, but. Yeah, I just, I'm not a fan of nuts. Like, I would eat it beyond that. I'm just, I'm not a fan of walnuts or pecans at all. I, if they're in brownies, I don't eat them. That's just me. Um, So one that I do like, that is, it's popular in Kentucky, probably not as much in Louisville, but definitely other parts of Kentucky. And some restaurants here in Louisville do have it. Burgoo. 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 So I've always thought of it as like burger stew. But Wikipedia says... It's a stew similar to Irish or Mulligan stew served with cornbread or corn muffins. Um, basically, it pretty much just involves meat, vegetables, and it's just a good meat stew. Honestly, like I'm pretty sure my parents used to make a variation of it, but they just called it hamburger stew where they literally just browned some ground beef and then threw it in a pot with some, like, vegetable stock, a can of veg all, and, you know, there you go. You got a stew. And you can kind of wing it, too, right? Like, there's no, mm -hmm. like, set thing where you have to no, uh, man. include all these. Look, it says traditional burgoo was made using whatever meats and vegetables were available, <laughs> sometimes including venison, squirrel, opossum, raccoon or even game birds I, like i said it's more popular in rural kentucky <laughs> i would like to think that's where some of those meat ingredients <laughs> originated but here we are wikipedia doesn't lie you can't cite it in school but it doesn't lie <laughs> some good old burger what's the uh um the next one is Benedictine spread, and this is actually one I had never heard of, and that's part of why I wanted to list it, because I just thought it was interesting. So, and look, here, it, the first recipe that pops up, Kentucky Benedictine spread. It's a spread made with cucumbers and cream cheese. Hmm. That's about it. Which I'm, you know, being here from Kentucky, I've never heard of that. I've before. never heard of it. No. I know people love cream cheese on their um, bagels and stuff. And I, I haven't heard of it. I never heard, at least I've never heard it called that. And I've never had cream cheese mixed with cucumbers. Next episode. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I mean, I can kind of understand the appeal because... Cucumbers give off that just cool garden green flavor, mm -hmm. which probably pairs pretty good with the cream cheese. But I don't know what you would put that on or in. Like, I wouldn't. Unless it's like a keto thing, well, like that's something to just started. I, I just don't I mean, remember hearing It's about called a spread. Up. Some people, it looks like, use club crackers or Ritz crackers. It's more of a dip. Like, people use it as like a vegetable dip, I guess. Hmm. I don't know. But apparently that originated here, so interesting and something that's probably very well known around the world at this point bourbon balls i mean when it comes to kentucky if we can find a reason to put bourbon in it we do it <laughs> i mean i mean why not i'm still working on a bourbon jerky recipe so <laughs> yes <laughs> you know I'm i mean ready. we're ready man it's i don't know if Rockets. it's just a marketing thing but it definitely works there Anything. too and it does, I mean, it does add a, it lends a good smoky, woody flavor, but it's just kind of funny how so much of this is just bourbon, bourbon, bourbon. Um, no Kentucky. So that's pretty much all we had down as far as just classic foods from Louisville. Uh, 
You ready to jump into some actual restaurants, local restaurants and chains and stuff? Yes, that's the best. Where we, where you want to start? So I'll start off the first one because I know you're not the biggest wing fan. And the first thing I have listed is wings. So hands down, there are some people who say otherwise, and we'll talk about them in a minute. But Indy's wings, if you're looking for some good deep fried good spice wings and amazing potato wedges but the wings are just perfect i've never had a wing where it really seemed like there was just no ligament like the it just falls apart like the meat just comes off and the breading it's a one of one of few breaded pieces of chicken that i can eat without sauce i'm a sauce guy and that flavor I love hot sauce. I love ranch and all that. But when I get Indies, I don't want anything. I just want the wings and the wedges. That spice. So that's my, definitely my personal pick as far as just some basic good bone-in wings. Well, and everything, dude. Like their sides. Everyone, uh, their wedges are great. They're, they got the biscuits. They got the, the I never Oprah. bothered with anything like else. Like everything. Like it's not, it's not a one-stop shop. Like yeah. you can get everything from there. Like yeah. everything is good. Like I'm, I've never been unhappy with their sides. Like, a lot of people do get their sides. I'm the the basic one that just goes in and gets like a 30-piece wing and a five-count of wedges. Well, and, you got to. You got to. I mean, like I've already spent $30 then, so. <laughs> you know? Good point. But good point. like I'm going to fill up on those wings. Wings, man they're they're just it's candy to me um and then joella's so i've had joella's they are a nashville hot style chicken and they have some pretty hot chicken they have a pretty dang hot nashville hot i've never so, tried them really you have you had nashville hot chicken though where it's like so nashville hot instead of just coating it in like a buffalo sauce or whatever what they do is they take some of the oil that it was fried in and they mix it with like cayenne pepper powder or ghost pepper powder, depending on how hot you want it, you know? So they, it's literally like an oil that they, they mix all the pepper powders and flakes and whatever seasoning they want in the sauce. They mix it in with the oil and then they just kind of like dunk the chicken in it and then pull it back out, let some of it drain off. And then it's usually served on toast so that the toast absorbs some of the drippings and okay, it's not so, just sitting in so a puddle. So it's just extra greasy and extra spicy is what I'm hearing. And delicious. Okay, yeah, I'm down. Okay, so <laughs> let's go to Nashville. <laughs> well, you don't got to go to Nashville. That's what I'm saying. Joella's is pretty, oh. it's pretty good. It's. I'm not going to say they're like, top rated in the country because i don't know i haven't been around the country and tried nashville hot but in kentucky or in louisville at least joella's is pretty good okay. and i'm pretty sure they started here and they've actually expanded pretty good okay they just use that same kind of nashville style they just yeah. brought it here okay so mm-hmm. we're let's go that'll be the next one well to compete with that our buddies are obsessed with going to royals for some reason uh <laughs> I shouldn't say for some reason. It's another Nashville hot joint that's local to Louisville. Um I don't know how they differ. Maybe we'll get some of each and do an Let's episode. Compare them. Nice. Um our buddy Corey threw in some recommendations as far as some best what he considered his top restaurants for some of these things and he mentioned King's Chicken. I haven't had them, so I can't really speak too much on it. Kings, Kings is good. Yeah, is definitely. it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have uh, very similar to like Indies, not seasoning. Seasoning's different, but as far as like that same kind of uh, uh, just good quality, like like tender, you know, break off the bone, you know, uh, it just falls off. Yeah, just and then the the rows and and they have wedges and okra, like very similar as far as like the sides, gotcha. like that very southern style. Uh, just not as spicy, really. I have to say, like like spice as far as flavor, but just not hot. Like Indies, gotcha. you know, Indies got Indies is pretty it, kick. So. Yeah, it's and um, that's why I don't use hot sauce because I don't see a need for it, and I'll. I love spice. I talk about using ghost pepper sauce all the time, but it's enough. So love it. I'm sorry. I'll get off the Indies kick, but you know, um, and then a couple others I haven't had, but 
I've heard recently from a few people some good things. So Corey recommended Mama's Barbecue Wings. Mm -hmm. And then my co-worker recommended Bootleg Barbecue's Wings. So I guess for some barbecue wings instead of fried, if you don't want your fried chicken, you just want that grilled wing. Good old barbecue, smoked wing. So let's go. A couple other variations. But that's all I had in the wing section. You want to launch us into the pizza section? Pizza. So pizza week's coming up soon. Uh, that's one thing. When, when people think of Kentucky, they don't they don't nef- they don't think of pizza. But we have a great selection. Like mm-hmm. with some of the top places right now, there's there's Derby City Pizza. There's uh, of course Spinelli's. That's one of the places we used to hang out at. Uh, Burt Reynolds. If Burt, you know, you know. Man, good old Burt Reynolds. Man, I, I think he's still there hanging out on Baxter. <laughs> literally. Uh, what what's some of your favorite pizza places? Uh, well, we can't leave out Union. Union, yes. Union 15. That's a newer one, right? They just... Yeah, they just opened because they just redid that whole Colonial Gardens area. So, it's not an old spot, but it's a good spot. It is. Uh, it's just, it's chill. It's right always across from chilling. the park. Mm-hmm. They're always really nice. And it's good. It has... So, what it makes it stand out to me is the sauce. The sauce tastes very fresh, very like like it's made with fresh tomatoes. I don't know if it is or not, but it tastes like it. <laughs> like I it haven't asked them, but amazing. Like they have really the, good the sauce and, and everything. Not just the pizza. The the uh, they're not bland on like the breadsticks and like the yeah for garlic sure and stuff. Those uh those, those cheese are, sticks mm. were really good. Um. And I've got their wings the first time I went there. Um, I got some of their buffalo wings. And they they weren't small wings. Like, sometimes when you go places, like, you get, like, little tiny wings. Like, no, nah, these they <laughs> these chickens were on steroids, your, bro. You got like, your dollar's worth. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bear Nose. I grew up on Bear Nose. My dad. So my dad used to always talk about bear nose he we got bear nose a lot because he just loved it but the way he got into bear nose is back in the 70s when they first opened right there on preston and um he used to order meatball subs and he would have them deliver it to like my grandma's basement door he would make sure to tell them come around back and go to the basement door don't wake my mom and dad up <laughs> like i didn't know they've been around that long they've been around a long time my friend so they've been like that's got to be one of the oldest then at that point. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't think. Uh, yeah. I mean, I would say so. And they have a lot of locations now, like Southern Indiana and here in Louisville, they have quite a few. And they're another one where the sauce stands out to me. It's a very fresh tomatoy sauce. And the toppings, like that. That's one of those one. Those yeah, the cheese is they... beautiful. Like it's really good cheese. They use premium ingredients and. So sometimes, like, when you start ordering multiple toppings from places, they'll start giving you less and less of each one, right? Right. Bear Nose doesn't do that, dude. You order a Supreme pizza, and that thing come in stack. They just pal it on. They, yeah. They ain't stingy there. Exactly. And they have really good cheese bread and stuff, too. So. Dude, Spinelli's. And, sorry. Oh, well, we Bear Nose, a lot of the locations have a really cool atmosphere to eat in as well. And, like, they'll do those some of them have tvs and show like sports games and stuff i know i've been there before and people were getting like pints or uh, uh pictures of beer and stuff so just a really cool little spot and just to hang out always chill eat some good food mm-hmm. man uh speaking of something to drink i remember uh spinelli's always going there and getting the pbr <laughs> dollar man. bro Good old dollar PBR. I think it was like sometimes it was seventy five cents on like Tuesdays or something. But either way, like you get a, a nice slice of know. pizza. <laughs> sometimes downtown well, they'd have concerts and stuff. Now I think Baxter is one of the only ones that are open. But I remember you could get. So was it where the small cans maybe seventy five cents and the tall ones were a dollar? Yeah. Because I remember they had twelve ounce or sixteen ounces that you could get. So <laughs> it was always a good time because it's right next to Phoenix Hill. So right there, you and just go I mean, get some pizza and go next door and see you some can, cool art in the summer. Like, well, 
I shouldn't say in the summer, it's getting a little hot, but like in the spring and the fall, like on a good night, like just walking down Barstown Road is an experience in and of itself and just all the sights and it's just a straight walk. You're not worried about getting lost. It's popular. There's, you're always, you're, you should feel safe. Like there's usually, it's usually pretty well patrolled and it's just a good time. And that's kind of like the end of the Bardstown walk, right? Like once it turns into Baxter, you got those few little places and Spinelli's is kind of the last one you want to go to. By right. that point, it's just a it's time to turn yeah, around. There's not much. Uh, now, uh, is it Dasani Pizza? I, I forget what it's called. It's right next to Magbar. The one next to Magbar? I have no idea, they, bro. I, I don't know if that's considered like New York style pizza or what, but they... When it comes to pizza, if you want to get it in Louisville and you want some really fresh, like you can tell it's like fresh toppings, like as uh, far as like the, the basil and the seasonings that they use. Facebook says it's pizza Donisi. Donisi, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, Donisi. Donisi. Donisi? Don, D-O-N-I-S-I. Pizza Amazing Donisi. Amazing pizza. Like great price, like in really fresh like you'll see like uh fresh huh. basil and lettuce and different things like on top of the pizza like it's so good not trying to interrupt you but just on their facebook page they have a chef's choice creation pizza huh? soul food pizza but not soul food like we think of soul food soul as in korea Ooh. and so it's got Gochujang roast pork and kimchi on spicy Korean barbecue sauce with green onions and mozzarella. So apparently they really experiment with some different style pizzas too, which I love seeing. I think that's awesome. Um, it's not Domino's. Dude. That's a cool thing. Like you can get something that's a little bit more, you know, like you need just fresh different. and just what yeah. you want. Like that's and it's right next to Mag Bar, so you can. Yeah, catch, drink, a catch a live show, catch a catch a slice. That's, I mean, awesome. and I mean, Mag Bar being Mag Bar, you're gonna hear the show outside. You can stand right. outside and eat your pizza, and you're still gonna yes. hear it. So, yeah, that's what's up. Um, Wix, Wix Pizza, yes, Wix is pretty good. Like, I'm very big on top. Not mad about it. Yeah. Then is Boomba's local? I know that. The, I know we have them here. I just, I, I just I, now thought about them. I would think so. I know that they're not, you know, they're not like Domino's. So like yeah, they're no, as, real, they're not like a big chain. So no, so um, I don't know if they started good. here. Like they, they're one of my favorites. Definitely on there, right there at Baxter or mm-hmm. uh, Barstown Road and uh, like Eastern Park East Parkway. Yeah, they have real good slices. So definitely reminds me of kind of like Spinelli's or like a Union Fifteen kind of pizza. Very good, all of them. And then the last one I actually have on our list was recommended by our buddy Corey Parlor Pizza. Apparently that was the his winner of last year's Pizza Week. Parlor. Parlor Pizza. So we're gonna have to keep an eye out for this year's Pizza Week, see if they're on there and see if he's right. Do you know what kind of style pizza they have? Is it like Chicago deep dish? Or oh, let's check. Bro, have you ever had legit Chicago deep dish? No. I think the closest thing I've ever had is lasagna. We <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty close. Parlor Pizza. Uh, looks like it's downtown Frankfurt Avenue. Um, it looks like just a basic crust. Um, I wouldn't call it New York style for sure. It's just, I don't, would you call that just like a basic Neapolitan crust? I don't know. I don't know. Looks good though. Yeah, I mean, I'll eat it right. for sure. Man, look at that. Flavor on that. Pizza. Those garlic bread look good too. And one place, I don't know if they're going to be part of Pizza Week, but I'm making them part of my Pizza Week. Is because, uh, as far as I can tell, there's only like one place that I see that has real legit Chicago style pizza. Well, it looks like Boomba's might have their own, but that's not really what they specialize in. So I feel like it's just not the same. I've been to Chicago and had the pizza, and it's just on a different level. But this place, Jake and Elwoods, Woods. I've never heard of that. That is Chicago-style pizza right there. So they kind of reverse it. I don't know if you see that, but, like, the crust 
it's like crust and then cheese and then toppings and then sauce. And literally, you, you have to, you almost have to eat it with a fork and knife. Like, you're gonna drop stuff everywhere. But it's delicious. It is very good. So, um, they also have Chicago dogs. So, I know a lot of people are fans of Chicago style hot dogs. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give them a try. I've never tried them. Yeah, I haven't either. They're on Frankfurt Avenue. So, we'll definitely have to check them out. Um,. So that's all we had for pizza, unless you have any other mentions. I don't think so. I mean, Union 15, definitely like one of my favorites right now. Uh, I'm a little biased. I mean, just because they're close or whatever, but they're. they're I wouldn't even say they're that close. I mean, if you wanted to, there's a Domino's closer, right? But if you want, if you want a good experience and you're trying to go somewhere to eat in, yeah, Union's kind of like, it's just, it's such a chill spot that they're always so nice. They're really active on Facebook too. And to be honest, we passed a couple to get there, so it's not like it's the closest one. Yeah, you're right. There's Domino's and there's other, you know, that's just one, They're of, just one good. of our favorites, yeah. right? Right now. I mean, who knows? We might find another one later, but mm-hmm. as of right now, I really enjoy going there when we decide to go out for pizza. Definitely. Um, so I threw in this burger recommendation just from Corey. Mm-hmm. I mean... The burger is such a a big thing. Like you could name off any Louisville restaurant and they have a burger, you know. So Corey said the best burger or maybe from Burger Week. I don't know. He said weekend burger. So I've never had them. I haven't either. I want to give him a try, though. Like that. I'm down. Uh, he I know he tries all the restaurants. He goes to all of them. <laughs> he so does. If Corey, like if Corey recommends it, that means like that's based on. I'm going to multiple places. So yeah. If he says it, then. And that's why we just threw all these in. Like, I'm literally saying, like, we haven't been here, but. you got to try it. It's a top recommendation from someone we know does a lot of the Louisville food stuff. And he's very, he's into the Louisville food scene, so. Dizzy Wiz. Dizzy Wiz? Great burger. Like, great selection. Like, they, they, I wouldn't say the never best been. burger. But when I think of just like a greasy burger and some fries, Dizzy Wiz is what comes to mind in local. Like yeah. That's that's the way to go. Uh, yeah, you can dress it up with some like, you know, like tomatoes and onions and stuff and cheese and lettuce, but it's a good burger. Yeah, I mean, a good burger doesn't need all the extra toppings. Like, I'm going to throw out a chain name. Don't get me wrong. I love Red Robin. Especially because they're one of the few places that do like ghost pepper burgers, real spicy burgers and stuff like that. But a good burger doesn't really need all that. And honestly, you kind of got to be in the mood for that because that's a messy burger too. (laughs) You know, it's a lot of sauce and then the peppers and trying to smash it all down. So it's not just grease you're cleaning up because any good burger is greasy. If if it's not greasy, it's not a burger. (laughs) Um. So I have a couple of notable barbecue mentions. I've only tried one of them, but one's highly rated and recommended in Louisville. So the one I'm throwing out is Shack in the Back. Yes. Right there in Fairdale. Yes. Um, I know they had a a tough transition out of COVID. I saw on Facebook they had to like find new property and all kinds of stuff. But they kept it running with like a food truck in between, and they like made it they hustled it and they, they made it happen. And now they have a restaurant like three times. It's it's not a shack anymore. Is the it's, point? <laughs> it's right there, right there at the uh, the turnabout, mm-hmm. uh, and it's doing really good. Like people, it's good. I've I had it. I've been eating it for it's years. Really like I, there's lines, so like it's not like because they relocated. Uh, absolutely not. That I think because they relocated, it actually sparked new interest. Mm-hmm. And right. I mean, for one thing, they did kind of put a call out on Facebook, like, "Hey, look, we know you're wanting your barbecue, but we had to move. Bills are higher now, like so. Come through when we are open." Because they struggled for a minute, but they're doing great, and it's really good. City needs it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, Feast Barbecue opened up in J Town. I haven't had them, but I drove by the place several times when I lived out that way, and they seem to do pretty good business, and it always smelled great. 
So I don't know. Yeah, just something to try. To try. Um, all right, sandwiches. So I have a couple of notable mentions on sandwiches. Obviously, everybody's had Subway. Everybody's had Penn Station, et cetera, et cetera. When we want to talk like simple but delicious, like gourmet grilled cheese, Melt 502. So they're right down the road from me. They're right off, right at Bargetown and Fern Creek Road. And so they're in the shopping center with the Moby Dicks, and they're basically like right behind that. Okay. Um, same shopping center as the El Nepal, even. Um, I don't know, they're they great. Have great sandwiches and just. Yeah. A couple of my coworkers have been there. They had nothing to, but good things to say. I had sandwiches and then egg rolls. Like That's a nice combination. It's interesting, but it, it plays off really good. Like they had like a jalapeno popper egg roll. That was really good. Like sliced jalapeno, some cream cheese, some bacon. And it's a real relaxing atmosphere too, right? Like just real yeah. chill and just like very welcoming, right? Like I haven't yeah. been there yet, but just from the stories you told me, like that that's where you need to be. Like if you just want to relax, mm-hmm. eat a sandwich or something, just hang out. Like Yep. They're they were they were just awesome. Um I know that they try to do live music sometimes too, so I don't know how active they are on that. It sounded like they were still working on the scheduling. Um, but they do have a little stage in there. And then um, you don't go into too many restaurants and hear old school rap and R&B. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bring it back. Bring so it back. it's just, it's a cool, it's just a cool place to go in and just hang out. And I mean, I waited by myself for my food and I was cool just sitting there hanging out, just drinking a beer, just waiting on the food, you know? So yeah, we got to check that out. Down. It was a good time. And then uh, the best cheesesteak I've ever had in Louisville was Vaughn Subs. So it's a new place. They just opened in the last few years, but they're delicious. Um, definitely, definitely the best Philly cheesesteak I've had in Louisville. Hands Good down. flavor and just... And more traditional, like... So they offer it in the traditional cheese Philly cheesesteak way with cheese whiz, mm-hmm. or you can like remove the cheese whiz and get provolone, which is the more thing, the more popular thing you see at like Penn Station or something. Okay, so but the cheese whiz makes it. Like I'm telling you, get that saucy cheese and let them put the onions on it and everything, and it's it's just really good and it's packed. Like it's a it's a good size sandwich. You're not getting cheaped out or anything. So nice. They're pretty awesome. Um, our next category is Mexican food. So nice. I don't think you can talk Louisville Mexican food without saying El Nepal. They're on every is, corner. It's everywhere. <laughs> They're on it's every amazing. corner. Love it. It's crazy. Um, but there's some really awesome, less known places out there, and one that, of course, is close to our studio here is Emilio's Taqueria. Emilio's right there on Blue Lick, man, and they're great. I know you like their fries. <laughs> they got some good seasoned fly, uh, fries and and their tacos and their like chorizo seasons. dip and stuff is really good. Um, their tacos are awesome. Their tortas are awesome. Their quesadillas are awesome. They got their burritos are awesome. Their Coronas are pretty they good got some too. Coronas. They got those margaritas. <laughs> they good price too. Like they're not yeah. like. And, you, one thing that's interesting is they have several types of salsa available. Yes. Different, yeah, right. So you have like the mild ones, but then they have like the spicier ones. Yeah. And they have the uh, L, uh, what's that green salsa? I really oh, like. the you, oh, you're talking the hot sauce, the El Yucateco. Yes. No, I'm talking about the fridge of salsas. Well, that too, but I, I put some of the green sauce in there. Okay, like, yeah. Amazing. So on the table, yeah, they have a huge, they, they have quite a few different hot sauces, but then they have that fridge of salsas, which... You can just kind of go grab a couple cups with your order and get different kinds. They have like four different flavors, so it's yes. pretty good. And it's not something you see all the time. Um, our buddy Corey for Berea Taco says Taco City has the best. Okay, so we got to give them a try. Yeah, because okay. if you're not familiar with Berea Tacos, I'm pretty sure it started in California, but 
there's like this crazy awesome marinade sauce that they like cook some beef short ribs or something in and then the tortillas that you serve the tacos in are then dipped in that same marinade grease and then fried and just it's good stuff. I feel so. like I gotta eat that with like pinkies up or something. Like that just sounds like a very Facts. high quality. A little bubbly. <laughs> right. <laughs> um and then just an honorable mention out there is don't don't just pass up any like taco truck or food truck you see. That's the best food you're gonna <laughs> get, man. Sometimes. That is <laughs> Yeah, I mean sometimes it really is like is I don't know. It's just something about it. They it's know right it. there. You yeah. get your gas and it's right there and you're hungry. Because they're popping up all over yeah. Louisville and they are like, they're posting up in gas stations or like mechanics lots or liquor store parking lots. Like there's food trucks just posting up and not moving. Feeding the community, <laughs> man. They So it them. is really awesome. Um, Thai food. So I haven't, I've had a few different places as far as Thai food in Louisville and nothing has ever compared to Thai noodles. They're on Preston. They used to be known as Thai Smile 5. They got like reworked or new ownership or something, but the recipes did not change. They are delicious and a really cool environment too. Really relaxed, really chill. And just really nice people. Like, they're one of the few local places I'll go to to pick up the order, mm-hmm. and I'll still tip. Like, I love this place. so They're just that I'll, nice yeah. and welcoming. I'll add that couple dollars to, like, round it up to the nearest five or something, you know? And what what sets them apart from, like, the other uh, Thai restaurants? Like, is the flavor? flavor? I mean, of course. For the- me, the flavor and the feeling of authenticity in the food. Um, and I know that might sound weird, but... And I guess I shouldn't say that because I haven't been to Thailand, but the, I don't know, just something about the Pad Thai and the Pad Kimau at Thai Noodles is just, I don't know, it's just really good. I don't even know how to say it, but nothing has ever, it's just not the same. Like other places, okay, here's one thing that's really set them apart in my mind, the way the noodles are cooked. So... Pad Thai and most Thai dishes are made with rice noodles and they have to be prepared a certain way or they come out tough. A lot of places I've had it, the noodles come out like just kind of chewy, just not quite done enough. They microwave it. <laughs> no, no. At Thai noodles, bro. Not Thai noodles. Thai noodles yeah, doesn't no. microwave. Thai noodles does it right, dude. The the noodles almost like melt as you like the, you bite into them and they just kind of like fall apart. Like it's nice. just it's just delicious. They're really soft perfectly done noodles they put work into that work right it's just it's great every experience is a joy going there so and they have really good thai tea too so i don't like tea like black tea iced tea but thai tea i'm pretty sure it uses like a black tea base but they put like cream and like vanilla and like a couple other things in it i don't know it it almost turns it into like a thai milkshake it turns into this really weird orange color and it's kind of crazy but It's really good stuff. Okay. And Chinese food. There's a Chinese restaurant in, on every corner. So I can only give my preference, and maybe it's because I grew up on it. Because, again, my dad always talked about it and has been eating it since the 70s, or was eating it since the 70s. Golden Buddha. Golden Buddha. Preston That's... and Outer Loop. Mm-hmm. Golden Buddha is delicious. They have the best egg rolls in the city. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> like, as far as some quick takeout Chinese egg rolls, man. I think most people agree with you, though. I mean, they really are a standout like, when it comes to... They wouldn't have lasted this long, especially in that Pre-COVID, location. post like, COVID there, there's no everything. way. They're always busy. Mm-hmm. Like, it, they're just... And it's another place that always has good service, you know? Mm-hmm. I've never had a bad experience in there. I've never seen them... Variety like, and flavor. One good thing about all these places is like you don't go in and see somebody upset. <laughs> like most of them seem to be happy to be there. Right, so that exactly. speaks out. Um, so we're almost done. We have a couple of uh dessert things that we were gonna mention. So 
cookies, I didn't even think about these types of things until Corey sent them to us. But as far as cookies go, Corey says crumble cookie is like the best. I've never heard of them. Where's that at? I have no idea. Let's go. <laughs> Let's, we'll try it. Um, but insomnia cookies, I've heard really good things about from other people, too. And insomnia cookies, you can order late. Like, you get a crazy cooking craving at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. Like, that's why they're called insomnia cookies. Nice. <laughs> like, okay. You need yourself a midnight snack to go to sleep. There you go. Let's go. Uh, so some ice cream mentions. Corey says homemade pie kitchen. I've had them. They're, they are really good. They have a lot of good flavors, unique flavors. And it's just it's good ice cream. That's how they make it homemade. And then one that's close to me that is really good is Highview Ice Cream and Coffee. Um, so they do. I haven't had their coffee, but they do like frappes, cappuccinos, lattes, all the different flavored coffees. And then they have a good selection of ice cream. My daughter loves going up there. We'll, I used to, I would take her to the park and then we'd go get a cup of ice cream, you know, hang out. They got seating in there and outside. So it's just real chill. Mm -hmm, it's a really cool Family. place. And again, just feels welcoming, you know. Important. And then last but not least, donuts. So Corey says Nord's Bakery has the best donuts. I agree. I haven't had them. They're but great. I've had sugar and spice which is on Bardstown Road, and they're really good. They have some really unique flavors. They have, like, a cookies and cream donut, which, I mean, I've seen other places do, but I don't, they they just have some really interesting stuff. So. Good flavor. And definitely homemade. Like, you see them working back there making them. Make it mean and the dough. They're one of the places that, like, run out of donuts. Like, if you go too late, you might not get the selection you want from Sugar and Spice. Which is good. That's how you know it's fresh. Yeah, that's how you know it's fresh, and that's how you know it's in demand. Yeah. And it's good, because people are showing up early to make sure they get everything. Because <laughs> I've been in there before, and they had, like, Lines. four, like Lines. three or four different types of donuts, because I was too late. I was like, damn. Mm. But, yeah, they always got a line, too. So, good stuff. Um, that's all we had at least lined out. Um, I know I did a lot of talking, but good stuff though. I mean, that's some good places. We got to check mm -hmm. them out. I'm ready. And again, I know I didn't display a lot of this on the internet like I normally do. Cause there's just a lot of it, but I will at least try to go back and find either website links or Facebook links for these places. If they have them, um, if they don't and you're interested in a location, you can definitely reach out to us. Um, you can hit us at general at villainynt.com and we'll get back to you. Or um, you can hit me up at Aaron at villainynt.com. So, all right, that, let's just fly. Sorry. It, it oh, that's a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure what it was. Like, man, it needs to go. But, that's all we have for today. So I guess that wraps up our September themed episode as far as Louisville foods and restaurants. Um, definitely a lot of information thrown out there. We've tried some. We haven't tried them all, but we're going to. And uh, next year we can review all these places. Definitely let us know if, if you guys have any recommendations. Yeah, absolutely. Comment. Definitely throw it in the comments and we'll try it. Right. We'll make videos out of it if we can. Like like I said, the uh get different like Nashville hot chicken, the Joellas and the Royals and see how they compare. So I'm ready. I guess with that we'll call it a night because it's actually night when we're recording this time. And uh as always, be blessed. Bless someone around you. And have a great night. Have a great one.